Hello there, colorful creators. I'm Claire and I'm gonna be one of your hosts here today. I hope you are super excited to be creating alongside of us. Rachel, who is going to be one of our other hosts, she is going to be creating a wonderful, colorful chameleon. And she's going to be doing that with a special guest who's gonna be joining her as well. She's also going to be drawing with a pack of gel crayons, which are really fun to draw with. And we are also going to be giving away some of these gel crayons to you. So we have a giveaway of the gel crayons along with one of our colorful aprons. And you can enter in that giveaway by clicking the subscribe button down here below and that will just make sure that you're entered in that giveaway and that will get you one entry into that. We will also be giving away five extra entries into the giveaway by commenting the word giveaway in the comment section below. So make sure you leave a comment that says giveaway to enter into that. So I hope you are super excited and ready to go on that and we are going to get started on drawing here in just a minute. Also stick around all the way to the end because we have a special announcement all the way at the end. So I hope you're ready. Go ahead and grab all your art supplies and we will see you to color our beautiful little chameleon. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome today. We are excited to draw with you. We are gonna be learning how to draw these beautiful, colorful chameleons. And to help me today, I have Emmy, who's drawing with us. Emmy, can you wave? Woo! Everybody say hi, Emmy. Today, to create this, you're gonna be needing a pencil, an eraser, some paper. We have mixed media paper, which came in a package that looks like this, just because we might use some water at the very end. You don't have that though, or if you don't have some of the other supplies, don't let it stop you. The basic thing that you need is a pencil and an eraser and a piece of paper. We also have some gel crayons from Mr. Pen. They are so awesome. We're going to be using these today and show you how great of a tool that these are. And permanent marker and a fine tipped permanent marker. That's all you need to begin. So we are gonna go ahead and get started. Emmy, are you ready? All right, if you're ready, type it in the chats, everybody, that you are ready and we're gonna get started. If at any point in this process you have questions, put them in the chat, excuse me, put them in the chat and we will do our best to answer them. And let's go ahead and start. So I'm gonna put this here actually for reference so that everybody can see what I'm referring to if need be. So we're gonna begin by drawing our chameleon's head. And the way we do this is just to start with this line here. We don't want it to be in the middle of our page, but not too far to the other side either. So let's go ahead and start with that. Great, and the great thing about using pencil is we can always erase and alter things as we go. So if you do a line and you don't like it, just erase it and start again. Next, I'm gonna be doing the mouth and that'll just kind of establish the width of my chameleon's head. All right, if you felt like you started over too far, just go ahead and scoot it over, it's okay. Nice. Okay, so once you have the size of your chameleon's head established, then you're gonna go from the tip of the mouth and make an arc up to the top of your previously drawn line. And remember, you don't have to get things perfect, right, Emmy? Practice makes progress with art, so we might have some mess ups along the way. I've practiced this already a couple times, so that's why I'm able to do it with a little bit more ease. Great, that looks awesome. And then from the bottom of the mouth, you're gonna go to that bottom line. And that finishes your chameleon's head shape. If you decide, hey, my chameleon's head is really skinny, I want it to be bigger, then just Move that line back, draw one right next to it, and make it bigger. I'm actually gonna do that because I think it's cute to have a really big headed chameleon. All right, are we ready for the body? All right, so for the body, we're gonna start at the top of the head, not all the way at the top though. And we're gonna go over, arcing up and around, and we're gonna stop about right there, a little bit below the head. We're doing great, nice, okay. Now, we're gonna be working from what is closest to us back. So the thing that would be closest to us would be these legs, the front legs. And to draw the legs, we're just gonna do this little, almost like a V shape that's on a side, or maybe like a greater than sign. Perfect. 
right? And when we draw with pencil, we draw really lightly. So it's easy to erase when mistakes happen. And mistakes will happen, guys. It's okay. Just keep going. All right, now the next one that we would do would be this back leg here. Okay, we don't want it to be all the way back here. We want to leave a little bit of space to allow for our tail. And again, with that greater than sign. Perfect, that looks great. All right, so the thing that would be next would be our belly of our chameleon. So beginning a little bit above the bottom of your chameleon's head, we're gonna go over to our arm. That's okay, you're gonna erase that part because the arm would be in front of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right, and then on the other side of that arm, make a little belly. I like to imagine that my chameleon ate some yummy flies and bugs for breakfast, so it's got a little bit of a belly there. And then the last thing over here would be the tail. So we're gonna stop right there until... No, nope, we're gonna continue on, I'm sorry. So we're gonna go ahead and work on our tail and just make that arc. And I'm just gonna leave that there because we're gonna continue on this side of the tail. Yep, perfect. So I'm gonna take the line that I had started before and continue it on and we're gonna actually hide these back feet so we don't have to draw them. Okay, little trick to make it a little bit simpler. Okay, arc that down and around and up. Okay, so I'm overlapping if you see, so it, I know that it's gonna cover those feet. And I don't wanna make it super tight because I wanna allow space for the thickness of my tail. Perfect. And then on that other side, we're just gonna follow that line that we already drew on the inside part. And we'll be getting narrower as we go all the way around. And curves are a little bit difficult sometimes. So don't feel bad if it's kind of hard to do that. It just takes a little bit of practice. Back and forth with your pencil, back and forth. If you have a whole bunch of lines like me, that's okay. okay those lines will be covered up once we color our chameleon and once we do our outline, you won't even see those practice lines. There you go, there you go. Very nice. Erase some of my little extra lines. Great, okay, so our trick worked. Our other feet, our other back foot is covered and this back foot is covered, so that's great. We're gonna add our little leg here because chameleons are like most animals and have four legs. You don't wanna only draw two. No, nope, you're doing great. Maybe try scooting it back a tiny bit when we start it. Back. Right there. Okay. You know what? And if, if part of the foot is showing, that's okay. I can, you'll just finish the shape of the foot like the other ones. All right. All right, so here we go. Now we're gonna do this front leg here. And because it's going forward, we want it to not angle backwards. We're gonna angle it forwards, okay? So begin by going forward and then your little elbow bend it even more forward. Mine needs to be a little bit shorter. You want them to end relatively at the same level. There you go, great. All right, so now that we have our legs, it's time to draw the feet. And chameleons have really cool little like robot feet is what I think of whenever I see them. So first we are going to draw our tree branch because we need something to anchor our chameleon to. So we're just gonna go right along, right underneath our chameleon's feet, chameleon's legs, and just draw a line. As I was telling Emmy when we were practicing a little bit, Okay, keep in mind that practice has already happened, so stuff looks easy to people who've practiced a lot. If you want to get good at art or learn any new skill, it requires a lot of practice. But I was telling her that branches are organic shapes, so they're a little wonky. They're not always um, going to be perfectly straight, and that's okay. So if your tree branch looks a little silly, well, it was just made that way.
All right, now let's go ahead and draw our feet. You ready for the feet part? Great. Okay, so we're gonna go up and back down. We do a lot of that shape, up and down, up and down. Okay, and the bottom one kind of goes down and then we're gonna kind of make a hook with the bottom. Great. Okay, and then the middle part is easy because it's just a V shaped connecting the both of them. Great, 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 great. All right, and then the same shape for the other one. Notice my top, the top of my little foot ends at the top of my branch. If yours doesn't, that's okay though. I chose to do that. It makes it look like it's wrapping and grabbing a little bit more. There you go. You figured that out, how to overlap them just great. All right. Now let's go ahead and connect those bottom if you have not, which you already did. I think it looks, I think it looks good. Maybe let's see here. How can we make it? That looks great. Yeah, I was gonna say angle that toe in a little bit more. You figure it out. Okay, a lot of art is just trial and error. So just keep trying until you figure something out. So you think, oh, that looks great. There we go. I figured out how to do that. And then you feel way more accomplished whenever you have navigated a challenge. No, it doesn't. No, no, no. Just make it a, leave a little bit of space here like this. So if you get one curve down and then you can just follow that curve right around. Well, how about Let's see here. We're going to navigate this, okay? Let's try erasing from here. Here, erase from here down, okay? Yeah. Yep. Okay, and we'll just make a tighter tail, okay? So if you're struggling with your feet showing through, just make the curl of your tail even tighter. All right, so this would be a tighter tail. There's more swirl happening. There's more curling going around. So we'd start here and just curling around. So it's just a really tightly curled tail. Does that make sense? Got it? There we go. All right, and then just raise that middle part. All right, just a challenge. It's okay. All right, go ahead and finish out the branch drawing. Yeah, yeah. You can even make a, if you're worried about your branch just like cutting through there, you can always make it bigger. It doesn't have to be right at the top of the toes, okay? All right, then we're gonna add the bottom of our tree branch. If it's helpful, you can get a ruler for this part or you can just draw a straight line and erase the areas that are on your chameleon. You're like, I'm not sure where this line would connect. Just draw it straight across and then erase any parts that are on your chameleon. All right, now I'm gonna add a little smaller branch here. You guys definitely do not have to. All of this is just kind of a guide. So if you decide, you know what, I wanna do something different, do it. I like to draw it kind of straight first, just another little rectangle shape, and then go back and connect it by softening out that, that line so it's not such a harsh angle. And then we'll erase that little line here. All right, now, what is our chameleon missing? So there's spikes on the back and the eye. Yes, it has to have an eye. And those chameleons are famous for those silly little eyes that move all around. So I draw a really big one. If you want to give your chameleon a small eye, you can. But I love the look of a really, really big eye. Right? And then you need a smaller circle in the middle or offset somewhere inside of that big circle. 
Now, we're gonna draw our chameleons with some arch details that give us space to create lots of patterns and different color variations. However you wanna pattern yours though is up to you. But this part is just big U shapes. I created a really big U shape in the middle because that's the area that is the biggest part of our chameleon. And then just keep falling around. Sometimes it's easiest too to draw whenever you turn your page where it's most comfortable for your hand. A lot of drawing motion happens in the wrist, not with your whole arm. Let us know, have you ever seen a chameleon before and what color was it? Write that in the chat. Awesome. And then if you want to add your spike details, go ahead and do that. All right, this is our pencil drawing. Now, if you would like to go ahead and add leaves or maybe some flies buzzing around for your chameleon to snatch out of the air, you can certainly go ahead and add those now before we move on to our marker outline. Leaves are a pretty simple, just out, make a point and come back in shape. Again, leaves are something that's organic, just like with our tree, tree branch. They're organic shapes. So sometimes when they're drawn, they may not look picture perfect and that's okay. They are, are organic shapes and those shapes don't always have to make visual sense necessarily. Very nice. I like how those are hanging off the page. All right. Once you have everything outlined and you are happy with your outline, we're going to grab our permanent markers and begin tracing all of our pencil lines. So if there's a pencil line that you know, oh, I don't want to trace that, go ahead and erase that. I'm going to kind of erase a little bit of my stuff but a lot of it, I'm just gonna kind of pick what line, what line I need to trace and go on that. Very nice. All right, so we are gonna be using just a good old Sharpie or a pin and gear, whatever sort of permanent marker that you have with a fine tip, grab that and use that. And this is part where you it's easy. Smooth sailing from here. You're just gonna follow your pencil line. Take your time, don't rush and then accidentally, you know, go too far. But you know if you do, it's okay. Just figure out how to navigate that. Actually gonna make my and sometimes you can alter things. If you drew it and you're like, oh, I wanna change that, it's never too late. We want to know what are your, some of your favorite things to draw. Let us know in the chat. Growing up, I always loved to draw parrots. I really enjoyed all the colors of parrots and the feather textures. Amy, do you have a favorite thing to draw? Dogs? Because you love animals, right? Yeah. So what kind of dogs do you like to draw best? Oh, your own dogs. That's, those are the best subjects. I get to draw them in like costumes from different movies. Oh, really? Just oh, that's fun. If you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe to our channel because we're going to be having a giveaway coming up and you have to subscribe in order to be a part of that and you're not going to want to miss it. So if you haven't done it yet, make sure you do. What's up? I think it looks good. I bet you once you get all the coloring done, you won't even notice it. Sometimes some of those things we overanalyze. We just have to say, you know what? 
it is what it is. I'm going to work with it. And a lot of times color will eliminate some of those insecurities about a, a drawing. Do you have a lizard? No. Who has a pet lizard? Let us know if you've ever had or do have a pet lizard. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, nice. I have never had a pet lizard. We've caught a lot of lizards growing up, but never had a pet lizard. Okay, markers starting to kind of run dry. If you're already past this point and you're ready to move on, after you get your marker outline done, take your eraser and erase all of your pencil lines. You don't wanna have any of those showing through once you start adding color to your page. What are some of your guys' favorite art supplies to work with. Do you guys enjoy painting, drawing with pencils? What do you like, Emmy? Okay. Colored pencil and watercolor. Those are awesome. I really like working with charcoal and acrylic paint is super fun too. Yeah. Alright, now that we have our outline done, I'm going to go ahead and erase and then we begin our detailing. So if you're ready to add some details, some fun little patterns or textures to your chameleon like you can see in these areas, grab your fine tipped, ultra fine tipped permanent marker and you can get started doing that. Now there's really no right or wrong way to do any of this, so just make it unique to you and get started. Mm -hmm. And remember, if you have any questions throughout, just put your questions in the chat and we will do our best to answer those and help you out in whatever we, way we can. If you ever want to learn how to draw something, send us a message either on our social accounts or you can email us at hello at colorfulart.com and we will get a um, video created for you learning how to draw your request. We love drawing or creating things that you guys are passionate about and you want to learn. So let us know what those things are. Now, really quick, the only detail that I'm going to specifically show you how to do is to do the details on your eye. So drawing these circles is going to make the eye feel spherical. It's going to make it feel three dimensional instead of just flat two dimensional. So I'm going to start with my middle point, which is the actual eye of the chameleon. And I'm going to just trace around that shape. And they don't have to be all the exact same size. Like, if you notice, my circle gets fatter on one side and skinnier on the other. That's okay. And if you run out of room, like I did right there, just kind of continue that same pattern around and into that bigger black one. And this is just going to make our eye look like a chameleon's eye, which turns all sorts of silly ways. I kind of wish my eyes could do that sometimes. <laughs> oh, you know what? I didn't add my little spikes on my million. 
So if you forgot part of that and you want to go back and add it, you can certainly do that. Make sure that you stick around till the end of our video today, though. Do you learn all the ways that you can enter our giveaway and any other news that we have up and coming? And in these arched areas, I'm just going to begin adding some different um, textures and patterns. Again, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I just thought it gave it a really fun look. Um, Kind of made it really funky and just a, I don't know, a funky looking chameleon and I like that. To avoid there being maybe too much going on though, I just chose to do these little um, polka dots around every other arch. Sometimes when we start to add details, it can get really busy really fast. So you can start to look at, okay, where are the areas that I want to have um, things going on and where are the areas that I want my eye to be able to rest and then move to the next interesting thing. So like this blank space will be a rest space for our eyes and then we'll get to move along to all these different patterned areas. You can definitely alternate between the thick marker and uh, your fine tipped marker to add whatever sort of a pattern that you want to see happen. And patterns are just simply something that repeats itself. So it doesn't have to be some, you know, grand drawing. It could be something as sim simple as um, hearts or diamonds over and over again, or maybe polka dots or a zigzag line. Has anybody gone to the zoo yet this summer? Have you gone to the zoo yet this summer? Yeah, okay. Nice. We got to go to a zoo recently and it had um, a baby rhino at it. That was really cute. It was a really small rhino. But I think my kids' favorite animal there was probably the ducks and the turtles. <laughs> Which I'm like, we can see those anywhere. But kids have their own things that they think are the funnest, right? What's your favorite zoo? Lions. lions. This zoo didn't have any lions, actually. Yeah, big cats. They had a snow leopard, though, which was really pretty. Oh, bears. My, my boys love bears. All right, once you are done creating all your patterns, then go ahead and grab anything that you have to color. Um, I have these amazing gel crayons. They're from Mr. Pen. And if you've never worked with these, they are so soft. Um, they're actually water soluble too. So you can blend them with water and a paintbrush, which is really awesome. We're going to kind of be showing you a little bit about how you can use these today, because these are actually one of the things that we're going to be giving away. So make sure that you enter our giveaway type giveaway in the chat and we'll make sure you you get five extra entries, but you also have to be subscribed to our channel in order to get entered into that giveaway. So there's no right or wrong way to do this. I've got colored pencils on hand. We've got markers. You could maybe be working with crayons, whatever you want to work with, go for it. This is a colored pencil set that we love. It is from Amazon. If you've never used their colored pencils, highly recommend them. Everything we use today, we will link in the description of this video. 
and let's go ahead and start coloring. Oh, markers are always a favorite too. So in this drawing of my chameleon, I chose to use warm colors on all of the arches and a cool color for the body. You guys can totally color however you want. I'm probably gonna go ahead and stick with this theme, but do whatever you want, create it however you would like. Yeah, go ahead. My son helped me color a chameleon the other day whenever I was practicing drawing this and he went crazy with these crayons. I'll have to show you. Anybody with young creators, these are super great because they cover a lot of space really fast and he loved them because they were so soft and easy to use. They're definitely a step up above a regular crayon. So if you have not checked them out before, highly recommend getting a set. They're very inexpensive. also blend really well. You can layer them together, which is super cool. Ooh, a blue chameleon. I love that turquoise color. Oh, nice. A good rule of thumb whenever you're coloring, just some little tips is to color in the direction of whatever space you're in. And that'll kind of help your colors flow really well together. Now that you know how to draw a chameleon, your possibilities of color combos are endless. So if you end up not liking how your chameleon colors turned out, just draw a new one and then color again. What's your favorite color, Emmy? I uh, like orange, blue, or turquoise. Oh, nice. No wonder you reached for that. Yeah, me too. What are your guys' favorite colors? Put your favorite color in the chat.
I used to really, really like purple, but I think I like blue now more than purple. You can try them. They're super fun. Are they a little bit different than you've ever anything you've used before? Yeah. I know, I was surprised by how soft they were. They like just are so smooth, it's crazy. I like to even take them and blend them into one another. You could do like a dark color first and then go lighter with your colors and it'll start to like blend out. What is something that you would love to learn how to draw in? I can't help it by my You know what? Noses are so hard. I have a hard time with noses too. <laughs> That's just one of those things that requires a lot, a lot of practice. And that's okay. People are actually, um, many people refer to drawing the human figure as the hardest thing to draw because it's so complex. But as you learn these foundational skills of seeing things and transferring those things that you see, the different shapes and everything, to your page, that'll help you learn to be able to draw more complicated things like people. So if you're like Emmy and you're like, I really want to learn how to draw a person, my advice would be to start drawing anything and everything. Really observe it, learn what it looks like, what different shapes it is. Um, and break down the form into some simple shapes. Because good artists are really good seers. They see things and they're able to um, break those items down into shapes. That's okay. We'll work it into the background. Whenever I was growing up, I drew something and I was, I had spent so much time on this drawing and it was of a person and whenever I got to the eye of the person, I just like totally messed it up. And it was with marker. So I couldn't erase it either. And I was so bummed. I had to just like walk away and think about it some. And my mom, who is also an awesome artist, she's the one who taught me and my sister a lot of what we know. Um, she just said, you know, just let's figure out how to how to rework it. What what can we do to make it still okay? And so she just encouraged us to think creatively about it and we did and I ended up adding a hat to the person and it was a hat that had like feathers and so the feathers kind of hung down in front of the eye and covered it up so it really didn't matter that her eye was messed up because you couldn't see it anymore and I thought that the hat actually made it look really cool in the end because I never would have thought to add a hat unless I had to think creatively and find a solution. So sometimes our things that are what we might feel like our biggest mistakes, we can actually use for some of our biggest triumphs. Always fun experimenting with a new medium though, huh? You just kind of have to play with it and figure out what you can do with it. Every time I see a chameleon, I think of Pascal from Tangled. I always thought that was a cute movie. 
smell was adorable. Do you need a paper towel to soak up some of the water? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep, definitely. I'm gonna put this here. Do you need any of these colors? So the really cool thing about these gel crayons is not only are they insanely smooth to work with, but then they're also so easy to move around with water. And they almost become paints then without the mess of paints. So if you have young kids, they are a really great resource, a really great tool to have around. What are some of your guys' favorite art supplies to work with? I asked that question before, but if you haven't let us know, let us know in the chat. We love to gear our content towards what you guys already have to keep your supplies minimal, as well as show you some new stuff that we find that we might think you guys would find helpful or really love. seem very organized, Emmy. <laughs> Whenever I was creating with Ivan the other day, he was coloring his chameleon right beside me and he just went crazy and dumped all the markers out and yeah, he's definitely not very organized creative, which honestly neither am I most of the time. I have a big mess around me and I wait till the very end to clean up because I don't like stopping to clean up while I'm going. <laughs> you don't? Yeah, it does make it more challenging. To make your chameleon look a little bit more three-dimensional, you can always add shadows, and those will help make your chameleon look more lifelike. So I would be putting shadows or darker areas on any of the areas that's underneath something. So it would be like the bottom half of my chameleon I'm making darker. definitely use colors to blend into one another or if you have a set of gel crayons you can use the water to blend them together maybe you're working with something else entirely let us know what are you working with are you working with marker are you working with gel crayons maybe pastels have you ever worked with pastels in Okay, probably chalk pastels. Dip them in water. You think so? Cool. I've done that before where you take them and you can dip them in water. There's so many different ways to use different art supplies. Sometimes even ways that we haven't even thought of yet. Why do you like to create art, Emmy? Mm-hmm. Decorate your room with. 
I like that too. I think it's so relaxing to draw and to paint and create. It helps shut the world out for a little bit. Oh, I love the way your blue turned out. It's so vibrant. Yeah, it's the blue on the chameleon. So areas that you added the crayon and stuff and gave highlights and shadows. You don't feel like you're stuck to one medium. You can always use multiples, just like Emmy did. Maybe mix some crayon over top of some colored pencil, or maybe you've got some colored pencil on top of markers. Maybe you're even using paint. Don't feel like you always have to be stuck to one certain thing. Oops. Now one thing I was disappointed with was they didn't have a brown in this size of a set. I think they do in the larger sets, but not in the 12 pack, unfortunately. So I'm going to use a brown marker to color my tree. Do you like to climb trees in? Yeah. We have a peach tree out front and our boys love to climb that peach tree. I think that is probably their favorite thing to do is to climb trees. I don't think they're as good at climbing trees as a chameleon would be though. Art is another great way to connect with people. Just like I'm able to do with Emmy now and sit and have conversation and just talk about life, talk about likes and dislikes. Art can be a great space for that to happen within your family or maybe with a group of friends or for a birthday party of some sort. Check out all of our other courses available on our website or possible family nights or um, birthday party activities. Screwing up. My orange was not screwing up for me. It kind of smudge with fingers too, huh? <laughs> Turned your skin thing. It kind of is cool though. It kind of smudges around, gives it a different look. Now, as I mentioned before, I had a mom who was really great at art growing up, but I know that not, that's not the case for everybody. It's not everybody's um, first initial skill, but I believe that everybody has creativity within them because we're all created in the image of God, right, Emmy? And he's the ultimate creator. 
So if you want to encourage that creativity within your kids, within somebody that you know, then share our page, please. We really wanna make art and creativity more accessible because God has created us all in his image as a creator. So we need to access that and tap into that and really use that and develop that gift he's given us. I always want you to remember when you're creating that learning something new takes time and practice. So if you get to the end of today and you say, I wasn't super satisfied with what I ended up with, then just continue to practice, develop that skill. I guarantee you it'll get better, it'll get easier as you put in the work, as you practice and try new things, as you see what works and what doesn't work. Art is so much about trial and error and just learning to see and observe and put that observation onto paper. looking awesome oh nice I bet if you yeah add some color around the back of it you won't even you won't even see any little smudge areas the sunset is a really awesome idea though The reason why I chose to make a pink sky was because it kind of contrasted my cool blue chameleon. Most of my chameleon is really cool colors, so I thought if I do something that's a warm color like pink or orange or um, yellow, then it would kind of, it would pop a lot more. So whenever we use those colors that are contrasting or complementary to one another, then it really helps um, just bring a bold dynamic to our picture. Orange, orange is a great choice, Emmy. Orange and blue are complementary colors. You know what it means for a complementary color? I always like to think of complementary colors as um, orange saying to blue, oh, you look so nice next to me. <laughs> it's paying it a compliment. So if you don't know what warm and cool colors are, Warm colors are gonna be anything that might remind you of something hot. So like um, pink, yellow, orange, red, those all might kind of remind you of like warm or fire or the sun. But whenever you get into like green and blue and purple, those might make you think of ice or um, cold water or maybe even snow or rain. Oh, nice. I like how you're blending those together. I 
If you have used gel crayons before, type it in the chat. Say gel. These are a pretty new art medium to me, but I am really loving them so far. What about you, Emmy? Have you liked them so far? Fun. So you definitely don't want to miss on entering our giveaway so that you have a chance to win your very own pack of gel crayons, but also uh, your very own colorful apron is going to be up for grabs too. So definitely want to make sure that you are interested in or entered in our giveaway. Don't want to miss a chance to win some free stuff. Everybody loves free stuff, right? Nope, you're doing great. I'm gonna actually add some more stuff to my leaves. And maybe you're done, that's okay. You can just sit and watch or maybe start a new, new drawing. Um, maybe you have one chameleon that you already made. Who can you think of in your life that is somebody who brings some color to your life? And maybe draw them a chameleon. It's amazing to me how just giving somebody a drawing that you say, hey, this made me think of you whenever I drew it. Um, really can brighten their day. Have you ever drawn something for somebody else, Amy? Who do you like to draw for? Yeah, there's mom and dad and friends. They're all great people. I know that I always love getting drawings for my son. Um, at church, I've had people give me some little drawings here and there too, which always made my day. So definitely don't underestimate the power of art and creating and um, just sharing that with somebody. You never know who might need a boost in their day and just to be reminded that they're being thought of by somebody else. You might also be able to make like a Father's Day card out of this. Father's Day is coming up. You make a picture, you one too, Dad. <laughs> Figure out some sort of a dad joke to put on it since your dad share lots of dad jokes. <laughs> definitely don't want to log off the video yet though because Claire's going to come back on and she's going to tell us a little bit more about our giveaway and some closing remarks so stick around you're not going to want to miss that you definitely want to make sure that you're a part of that giveaway and we really hope that you'll subscribe to our page um, to our channel we put out art videos every week and we just want to make this a community where you can learn and grow and we can create a colorful life together that looks awesome, Emmy. Thanks. Go for it. Is your page wet still? Is it working okay? Awesome. I'm actually going to add a couple little spots to mine, too. While we finish off coloring our pages, we're gonna transition and let you hear from Claire and we'll come back on at the very end and let you see what we have created. And we hope you guys will share your creations with us. Post them on Instagram or Facebook and tag us. We'd love to see your creations and we look forward to hearing from you guys and um, you guys joining our community. Thanks so much for creating with us today. Done. That's okay. It's great. I love it. It really stands out against the warm colored background. All right. This is what we created today. Hope you'll share your creation with us. Put it up there so they can see. I hope you guys say thanks, Emmy. She did such a great job. Thank you for joining me, Emmy. And thanks for joining us today, guys. 
Hello, colorful creators. Again, Claire here. I hope that you had a blast being able to create this cute little chameleon with us. We know that we had such a fun time creating as well. Make sure that you go and you enter in that giveaway by subscribing down in the button below and then also commenting giveaway in the comments and that will give you five extra entries. We will be drawing our giveaway winner and announcing that in a YouTube video coming out and released on Monday. Uh, June 12th. So make sure that you are subscribed so you don't miss that in case you are a winner. And that winner will be receiving some gel crayons like Rachel was creating with today. And then also one of our art aprons and those will be sent to you. So don't forget to subscribe to that. Also, lastly, we are having a special sale on our website for all of you those who attended our live today. And that is going to be a special discount of 50% off all of our courses are art courses that are online. So if you're wanting to learn more about art or learn how you can create more at home, then you can check us out on our website. Uh, and that's going to be the code WOW50 to get 50% off. Again, that is code WOW50 for 50% off all courses. So make sure you enter in that giveaway, subscribe to us on YouTube, and go check out all those courses. And we will see you back here again for more fun art videos at home. See you guys.